O sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. On this Monday of Corpus Christi, we keep the feast day of um, three saints whom I want to mention to you, or three groupings of saints, who uh, are all of them connected with family or children and have an interesting story. And as well, today, we have the feast of one of the 14 holy helpers, St. Vitus, or St. Guy. And um, he is invoked for all sorts of causes. He's invoked if you have trouble getting up in the morning. He's invoked against the disease that holds it has his name, uh, St. Vitus Dance. He's also invoked with confidence against epilepsy and against um, the uh, against rabies, the, the, the bites of, of, of mad dogs. St. Um, Vitus is the first of our childhood stories. The tradition is that he was converted by his tutor and by his nurse, who are commemorated today as well, Modestus and Crescentia. His father was a pagan during the time of Diocletian, the end of the Great Persecution, and he was a senator from Sicily. And he, um, when he discovered what had happened to this young boy, the son of his, had become a Christian, delivered him to the judge to be scourged. God punished him by striking him blind. And it is said in one source that St. Vitus was able by his prayers to restore his father's sight, but he could not obtain for him the gift of faith, which would be a consolation when we pray for some people, and the, the interior vision of the faith seems not to be granted in God's providence and according to his own justice. And then St. Vitus, um, uh, having been scourged, was able to escape with his, his, with his tutor and his nurse, and their adventures took him to Rome, where he uh, was a prodigy of miracles, and he expelled or exorcised the devil from the son of the emperor Diocletian. That got him more renown and more trouble. A series of tortures followed, and finally all three of them died as martyrs, giving a glorious witness for the faith, St. Vitus or, or St. Guy. The um, second saint whom we honor today is a, a much more recent saint, but also a child saint, St. Germain of Pribas. And she has a beautiful story. She's sort of the Catholic version of Cinderella, really. She was born about 1600 in rural France, and her mother died shortly thereafter. The, her parents were farming people. They were some prosperous peasants. They had, they had their own lands and farms, flocks. And um, when his father remarried, as dictated by necessity, of course, then he, uh, his second wife became her stepmother. And she was the classic cruel stepmother. She was extremely cruel to this little girl. She had been born with scrofula, some kind of a disease of the skin, and she had been born with a withered right arm. And the wicked uh, stepmother hated her, even though she was a very sweet girl by disposition, and she loved the stepmother's children, her half-brothers and sisters. But she was forbidden to associate with them, and she was made to sleep on a pile of twigs under the stairs or else in the barn. And she was never taught to read or write. She was, um, uh, she was a shepherdess. She was very known for her devotion to attend daily mass. She had to walk a great distance. She went to daily mass. Um, and that she, what she would do is she would, plant, she would plant in the ground her shepherd's crook to guard her flock so that the wolves, there were a lot of wolves in the area, would not get the sheep, nor would the sheep escape and cause any damage to a neighbor's property. So that was also an issue, eat the, eat the crops or something. And then when she came back from her daily mass, she would take the crook out and take care of her sheep for the rest of the day, and she would, she would pray the rosary. The only association she had with other human beings was the children of the village. And she taught them their catechism in her own way, and also to love the good God, that's what she would say. Now one time, there were torrential rains and heavy local flooding, as they say today. And um, the villagers cruelly, as people will, speculated, aha, now Germain is not going to make it to Mass today, because the creek had risen so high that even grown men were afraid to ford it for fear that the strong torrent would carry them off and drown them. 
the two of her neighbors spying on her saw her walk right through the waters which parted as for Moses so that she could go to daily mass. A beautiful saint then of the Holy Eucharist and of daily mass. Uh, later on in her life, as she got to be a little bit older, just her sweetness, the sweetness of this little girl's disposition and her great love towards everyone, beginning with the good God, won over the wicked stepmother and the, the vacillating and weak father, and she was invited to live in the, with the family and come to the house. But she said, no, she was quite happy where she was, thank you very much, and she persevered there all the way to the end. She died about the age of 21 or 22, St. Germain of Prebach. The, our third child saint is Saint um, Edberga, who was a princess. She was the daughter of one of the Saxon kings, a Saxon king of what is today Winchester. And when she was three years old, her father took her into his lap, and he pointed to her. He had arranged on a table jewelry, bracelets and uh, necklaces and things like that, glittering, beautiful jewelry, and uh, the book of the Gospels and a cross. She was asked to choose at the age of three. And without hesitating, this little girl reached out and she touched the book of the Gospels and the crucifix. She chose our Lord. And uh, she uh, entered uh, the convent at Winchester where she became the abbess. And she's known for her very great humility, as all the saints are, that she would get up sometimes during the night. And uh, if you've ever been to an English hotel in the old days, they, have, they used to have this nice custom. I don't know if they still do it, but it's ever so convenient. You just put your shoes outside the door, and somebody mysteriously comes and he cleans them for you. And when you get up in the morning, you retrieve your shoes, and they're all ready to go for the day, no matter where you're going to go, tramping around in the mud. Well, she would do that. See, the abbess and a princess to boot, she would get up, very, very early, and she would clean the shoes of all the sisters and leave them outside their door. Good old English custom. Profound humility. Those are our three saints today, and we should know them and we should love them and ask them for the grace of a little humility. Humility is alluded to in the Collect, whereby we commemorated St. Uh, Vitus today. Cardinal Schuster says, invoking from our divine Lord the grace of humility so necessary to all Christians and by which so many poor and simple souls, think of St. Germain, even children, St. Vice, faced martyrdom with God's help. This lowly conception of the self, this abasement of the spirit, will extinguish in us the fever of selfishness and make us zealous in the exercise of divine charity. We can probably never pray for or reach out and practice a little humility when some odd inspiration comes to us sufficiently, because it truly is the science of the saints. The, the post-communion is of interest, because as many of the prayers of the Mass during Lent, in the old Lenten Masses, the post-communion points out something about the Blessed Sacrament, which is generally forgotten today. That is to say that our Blessed Savior has given us this sacrament, as well as others, for health of the body, as well as health of the soul. It is an antidote to the poison which was transmitted by the serpent in the apple of Eden, and it can give health, strength, and joyous youthfulness to the body, to God who gives joy to my youth, that we pray at the 42nd Psalm at the foot of the altar. St. Gregory Nazianzen says of his sister that um, she would have no other medicine when she got sick than going to Holy Communion. It is because of this truth that the Church and her colleagues often causes us to ask for the health of the body as well as the health of the soul, in order that we may be better able to serve God and our neighbor. Let us ask these things to make us realize the treasure that we have in Holy Mass and in Holy Communion, and to draw from it today in particular the sweet lesson of humility. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.